Now I want you to listen to point two of this message. Nothing is more odious to God than a profane neutrality. Listen to this. Nothing is more odious to God than a profane neutrality. I'm neutral. I'm neutral. How do you believe in the tribulation? Well, whatever pans out. You ain't got enough guts to be a champion for the Lord. You know what the word of God said concerning that. Well, uh, I don't want to I don't want to shake nobody up. Thank the Lord that Jesus sent the sound of a rushing mighty wind called the Holy Ghost and like the blow of the Jerusalem temple down and shook people up. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? God will shake your tree, brother. Now I want you to listen to this point, point two of this message. Listen to this. Nothing is more odious to God or in other words, repugnant to God than a profane neutrality, especially concerning his word. Somebody says, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, well, I believe you need to sometimes say, if you don't know something, say, I don't know. But when it comes to his word, say, well, this is what the word of God said about that. Yeah, but, 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 you know, ands, ifs, or buts. If something ain't working, it ain't God's fault. So he said, don't take a neutral stand. You take a neutral stand, you're going to get, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get so neutral that you're going to literally bust hell wide open. If you don't believe me, turn to, with me to the book of Revelation chapter 3. Quickly, I want to go through some scripture tonight. Revelations chapter 3. That's the last book of the Bible. You can't miss that. Just turn to the end. Revelations chapter 3. I want to read something to you here. Revelation chapter 3. Listen to this point. Nothing is more odious to God than a profane neutrality, especially concerning his word. Now listen to this. Revelation chapter 3. Start reading with me. Verse 15. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, in other words, you're neutral. You're kind of staying in the middle, bless God. I will spew thee out of my mouth. And I won't let you know something, bless God. If God spit you out of your mouth, you know where you're going? You're going where the fire will burn you up. You're going to a place where the worm dieth not, the fire's not quenched, hell is just as real as heaven. People say, I don't believe it. I got one man told me to come to my house. He said, well, hell is just here on earth. I said, no, hell ain't here on earth. I said, you don't believe me? He said, I don't believe you. I said, I don't care. But when that fire be burning your rearing up, you're going to wish to God you had. Well, I want to stay neutral on this point. If you stay neutral, that's lukewarm, bless God. You won't have enough guts to stand. God said, I'd rather you be totally wrong and have enough guts to stand up and believe what you think. Or totally hot. I want you to know something about the word of God. Before you get lukewarm, you had to be hot. There's a lot of Christians got real hot one time. Now they've settled down the lukewarmness. What do you think about this? Well, I'll tell you what, that's just whatever they want to do. That's lukewarm. Do you go to church? Yeah. You a good Christian? Yeah. Your name's on the roll? Yeah. What roll? I don't know. Never saw the roll. Always talk, you always talk about the roll. I never know what the roll was. <laughs> See, if you ain't got enough guts to come up to somebody and say, you're walking in sin, you're wrong. You've got onto that plane of neutrality. Yeah. One lady told me, she said, Brother Duplantis, call me on the phone. She said, Brother Duplantis, I'm living in sin. Will that make God mad? I said, enough to burn you up. Oh, but Jesse, but God loves us. I say, he sure does. He loves you, but he hates the sin that you're doing. See, he hates the sin. He loves the sinner. She said, but I like this man. I said, well, marry him. Oh, I don't want to marry him. I said, well, then go to hell. <laughs> well, that's just the truth. She said, oh, Oh, and she found out she had some problems with her body. She called me up. She said, you think God's mad at me? I said, no, but the devil's enjoy killing you. I could have said, well, you know, honey. I mean, who going to know? <laughs> you know, Jesus said, be ye holy, for I am holy. <laughs> One man said, there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. But I said, there's such a thing as conviction. There's such a thing as conviction. You follow what I'm saying? See, when you take a neutral stand, you get in trouble. See, Jesus said, stand on my word. Let my word stand. My word will not fall down. It will stand. Yeah. Yeah. See, she said, well, I, but, 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 uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I said, well, you're going to do it a lot longer in hell. 
She said, I don't like you to tell me that. I said, I didn't tell you that. I'm just repeating it. God's saying it. Nothing, let me say that point again, nothing is more odious to God than a profane neutrality. Just saying, well, you know, let's don't rock the boat. We're just going to stay within the wave, you know. We'll just crest on the wave. <laughs> Isn't that something? Jesus said, I'd rather you're hot or cold and lukewarm, boy. He said, I'd rather you just believe me or just walk away from be a total heathen or be a total Christian. That's what God's saying, see? That's what Paul said. He said, brother, if you can't, he said, but another angel come over here saying something different. I said, don't hear him. He's a devil. Whew. Cool. Lord. Think about that. Are you a champion or are you a mouse? Now, Jesus said, great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Do you believe that? Yeah, bless God, I believe that. Well, you better believe that when the devil comes against you, too. You can believe it when, the, when all the, when, 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 you know, everything's real smooth. Most people love to say God's this and God's that when everything's running good. But, boy, when it's running against the grain, let's find out what kind of Christian you are now. You know? Say, so, well, it don't ever run against the grain. Well, then you don't know the word of God. I can tell you that you're very ignorant of the, not, of the word of God at all because one man asked me, it was so funny. He said, Brother Duplantis, I want you to lay hands on me and I want you to pray for God to get rid of the devil, just to leave, tell the devil to leave me alone. I walked back up there, walked, and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, kill this man. He said, Whoa, brother, I said, don't say that. I said, you want you ask me to pray for God to help you get rid of the devil? I said, I'm going to tell you something, partner. I said, the devil will fight you tooth and toenail till God kicks him in the lake of fire. He said, well, don't pray for me to die. I said, well, that's the only way you're going to get released from the devil. Because the devil will come at you with everything he's got. But Jesus said he's under your feet. Amen. Learn to slap. You can whip the devil when you sleep it. You ever been sleeping, get a bad thought in your mind? Start praying. People say, well, you never can control your dreams. Try it next time. Well, I'll never forget when I had a dream one time, I was one of them, uh, one of them sheiks, man. <laughs> they had a, well, what do they call them? A harem. I ain't going to tell you the rest of it, but bless God, I was a popular sheik. <laughs> now, don't, unless you're laughing at me, you probably do the same thing. Most of you guys do the same thing. And all of a sudden in my sleep, I said, you demon devil of hell, in the name of Jesus, I command this to quit. And all of a sudden, I was in a good, sweet dream about God. I lost my turban. <laughs> Got back my halo. <laughs> yeah. You can even control those things because you have the mind of Christ. Jesus said, bring every thought into captivity, the obedience of Christ. He didn't say, only when you're awake. He said, when you're asleep, too. I want you to listen to this. I like this. Don't you like this? Champions will sometimes stand alone while mouses will run in the pack. <laughs> Let me give you this point. Champions will sometimes stand alone while mouses or meeses, or whatever you want to call them, will run in the pack. If you ever see one mouse, you know I'm going to see another. If you ever see one hypocrite, chances are you're going to see another. They kind of flock together. Birds of a hypocrite flock with the hypocrites. <laughs> Isn't that something? Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to bring you to some scripture tonight. Y'all enjoying this? 2 Timothy, that's right after 1 Timothy. That'll help you some more. Say, is that in the Bible? Yeah, if you ain't got it in there, get a new Bible. It's supposed to be in there. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Listen to this point. Champions will sometimes stand alone while mouses will run in the pack. You ever know somebody lied to you? He said, I'm the only one remaining here. The rest of you people done turned. They couldn't say a word. They shut up. He said, you've all turned your heart against God. He said, if God be God, follow God. If, God, if Baal be Baal, then follow Baal. He said, I'm, I just read it to you there in, in, uh, for, in 1 Kings 18. He said, bless God, I'm only here by myself. I'm the only man standing up for God out of 3 million people in this nation. Isn't that amazing? He had enough guts to just stand up and just flat believe God is a champion in the Lord. But no mealy mouse. Well, you know, let's don't make Ahab mad. You see what I'm saying? Listen to this point again. Champions will sometimes stand alone while mouses will run in the pack. Paul talking to his beloved son, Timothy. He says here in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God. Notice he said before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. He didn't say compromise the word. He said preach the word and be instant in season and out of season. 
In other words, bless God, don't ever get caught short with your experience. Reprove if you got to. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering. In other words, compassion and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine or good preaching, but after their own lust, what is lust? Lust of the flesh, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I told you, mouses run together. But a champion won't stand alone. And sometimes it's hard being out there by yourself. This great apostle Paul, one time in a, in, in a complete cell, he said, only Luke is with me. In fact, if you go up to verse 11, he says, only Luke is with me. Here's the powerful man that went across all that world out there and built churches everywhere and stood on the word of God, took whippings and beatings and stonings and starvation and hunger and everything you could think of and only had one person with him. He said, only Luke's with me. See, he was a champion inside of us in a desert, bless God. He was a champion in a prison. He stood alone. He said, I don't care what anybody said. He said, I'm going to preach the word. I'm in season and out of season. See, he's a champion. But mouses run together. You'll always find one man said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, man. I say, ain't no use rocking the waves. There ain't no use, you know, rocking the boat and causing the waves to splash in the boat. See, if you don't start standing and coming against the establishment, what's going to happen is, you see, most people now think that the federal government's done got too big and the deficit's done got too big that we can't do nothing about it. Well, all we got to do is bite the bullet and guess what? It'll all work right. Nothing ever gets too big that it can't be pulled down. You follow what I'm saying? But most people don't want to buck the establishment. Well, let's just kind of flow with the tide. The tide sometimes goes out. You understand what I'm saying? The tide sometimes goes out, but it's got to come back in. It's got to come back in. Jesus said, I want you to stand up and speak the truth. You preach the word. And some people don't like it when you preach the word the way it's supposed to be preached. They don't like it, see? And that champion has to stand alone out there. But I'll tell you what, they'll always remember the champion. They'll remember him every time. And all of mouses that ran with the pack, they'll fall by the wayside as their lives go on. You understand what I'm trying to say? Paul said, Timothy, you preach the word of God. You stand on my word. In other words, he said, you've got commitment and dedication on your side. You've got to believe that God's word's going to come to pass. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus said that. Jesse, what are you? Man, I don't have time to boudet and pout and do everything you can think of. And, oh, God, Lord, what I want to do? This and that, my Lord, I got to, oh, Lord, you know, oh, God, oh, listen that. Man, they don't want to hear, God don't want to hear that trash. He wants somebody to stand on the word and believe what he's saying. He said, sometime you're going to stand alone. And I want to tell you something. In Jesse Duplantis Ministries, I've stood alone. There's been sometimes I didn't know what to do. Brother, I was on an island and the devil was eating up the land under my feet. And he used good Christian people to do it. And the worst thing in the world is use your best friend to cut your guts out. And all of a sudden, you're standing alone. I said, God, well, all I got to do is back up, not do anything. One man said, would you like to preach in this big church? I said, I'd love to. He said, well, you can't say what you say. I said, then I'm not going to preach there. He said, why? I said, because I don't say what I say. I say what God says. Yeah, yeah but I mean, you know, then people got a lot of money. Big deal. Hardy, har, har. <laughs> yeah, but they'll give you a big offering. I'll get a big one anyway, so who cares? Why? God's the El Shaddai. <laughs> Man, my, why should I have to worry about finances if God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he owns all the earth? I'm his son. He loved this boy. You don't believe me? Bow your head and ask him right now. Ask him. Go ahead. Say, you love Jesse? He's going to say, mm-hmm. <laughs> he loves me. You understand what I'm trying to say? He said, I want you to stand on my word and preach the word. I want you to. I've had a boy just I've had him come at me with knives and darts and everything you could think of. What you wanted to do? I mean, I wanted to bust them, but Jesus said, love them. The hardest thing to do is to love somebody that's hurting you. But brother, the Bible said, get a heap coals of fire on the heads. See, that's what Paul said. He said, Timothy, you just preached the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Just believe what my word said. i never forget this. You might have heard me say this before. One time I came home and, and we, were, we had just moved to... Um, Home of Louisiana from Dallas, Texas. And we lived in a little one-bedroom apartment on East Main Street. And it was my mother-in-law's apartment, and me and Kathy. And, of course, that was a big apartment in those days because we had lived in hotel rooms for about five years. But to make a long story short, I walked in. When I walked in, I opened up the door. I didn't see anybody in the living room. And the living room door was closed. And I said, my God, what's... but the television's on, everything's on. Silence, man. I said, what's going on? You know, I looked, so I walked through the door. And, I, and of course, you know, you walk through this door, and I, I went through my little living room and I open up the door and they got the kitchen on this side and the bathroom on this side and the bedroom. You know, it's all kind of all like in one except one door separated. And there's Kathy and Jody, both of them standing in the middle of the bed. I mean, not st sitting down. I mean, standing up in the middle of the bed. And I look and say, what's the matter? And Kathy said, there's a rat in the house. <laughs> and of course, Jody was little and she said, daddy got a tail this long. 
First thing I thought of was a neutral. My God, man, we got a neutral in my house. <laughs> I said, well, y'all come help me. <laughs> See, they just knew for sure that that rat could not jump on that bed. I said, where is he? He's in the living room. We locked him in there. <laughs> Little did I realize I would come into it, right into, right into a picture with an Olympic rat. <laughs> this rat could outrun Bruce Jenner. This rat had it together. She was a mama rat. So I said, where is it? They said, it's in the room. Go find it. You ever notice people always will send you somewhere, but they ain't coming to help you? You ever notice that? i never forget when we was little, we'd walk in the house, mama said, y'all go first. Go check underneath the beds, Jesse. Man, I didn't want to look underneath the bed myself. She's bigger than I was. I said, but mama. She said, listen, I can always get another one of you. There's only one of me. <laughs> well, we had to go lay the bed. <laughs> you ever had somebody tell you to go take the light off in the kitchen and all the lights in the house are dark? I mean, everything's off. Or, hey, you left something running in the kitchen. You got to go walk through there during the dark. You ever seen good Christian people walk like this? <laughs> Boy, I tell you what. I told Jules one time, but I decided not to do it because I didn't want to get killed. I was going to go to his house one time at about 1 or 2 o'clock morning and knock on his window. He said, do you want to die? <laughs> I said, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> no, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> and I forget one time I was crawling in a lady's house because she had had to, she couldn't open up the front door and I wanted to get in. She said, well, come around on the side and I'm going to let you get through the window. And I said, okay, and I'm crawling in. And a woman come out. Of she said, thief! and start beating on me. I said, how? Well, you know, when half of you in, the other half's out. I said, wait a minute. Wait. Boy, she's just going to beat my brains out. I said, where's this rat? So I thought, you know, the first place you look for a rat is on the floor. Not this rat. This is a Superman rat. This rat got music. Dun, 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 dun. You know. <laughs> wait a minute, that's Rocky rat. But anyway. <laughs> Whatever. And I'm looking on this. And I'm looking. I'll never forget this, man. And, and, and Jody says, Daddy, you found him yet? And I said, No, I don't know where he's at. And I'm looking, but I said, There ain't no rat in here. And then when I turned like that, I looked. This joker was, had climbed up the curtain, was sitting on the curtain rod saying, <laughs> I looked at I said, Look at this. And this rat was about this big, <laughs> with a tail about that long. <laughs> Kathy said it was this big. And Jody said I had a tail this long. <laughs> so I was going to get my 12 gauge, man. <laughs> my God, that's a rat that big, son. It's going to take more than a mousetrap to get that boy. Now, what would have been odd if when they told me that, I went, oh, my God. And I went and jumped in the bed with him. <laughs> See, I would have been a mouse. So I had to be their champion. <laughs> I didn't want to jack with the rat myself. <laughs> I don't like rats. How do you know? I had one run up my leg one time in my grandma's house. Boy, they run fast, yeah. <laughs> I come out that bed too. That rat tell you the hard time staying with me. And I said, first thing that comes in your mind, rat carries rabies. <laughs> you know, I said, I'm gonna get this rat. So I said, boy, when I did, phoom, she went behind the curtain rod. This rat could hang with one paw. I mean, this was an Olympic rat, boy. And all of a sudden, she come back up, and when she did, she just bails out and jump. I mean, that rat jumped from here, I guess, to that cassette deck, boom, on the sofa, behind the sofa. So, man, I pull the sofa, and I pull the sofa in the front. She come on the front. I pull it over there. So finally, I had to take all the furniture, take it off the walls, and put it inside, and right in the middle. Try to get everything out. This rat, I couldn't. I done everything trying to get this rat and couldn't. So it dawned on me, go get you a broom. I got me a broom with a big wine broom. I said, I'm going to bust this rat. Boy, and I said, come on. I said, hey, hey, just a rat. We ain't getting out this bed, Jack. In fact, we're going to leave this house, man. They just wanted to leave. So, boy, I'm trying. Every time I try to hit that rat, foot, you know, finally I just got all that furniture. I ran that rat around, and that rat ran straight into a corner. When she come to the corner, she knew she couldn't go nowhere. She turned around, and, you know, you ever seen that little stare and look like, this is the big one? This is it. I looked at that rat, and that rat looked at me, and I was just standing, both of us looking at each other. We both sized each other up. You can see both our eyes kind of doing that. 
And that rat knew that she had only one way to come, and that was straight at me. And I had that broom. To be totally honest, I was scared of that rat. <laughs> when you see a rat bail out like that rat bail out, son, that was an Olympic rat. She just, we just stared at each other for maybe three seconds, just looking. Who gonna make the move? I sure wasn't. <laughs> and she took off. When she took off, boy, it, you know, it seemed like a little blinding gray flirt. Boy, I come down with that broom. Pop! When I hit that rat, that rat went. <laughs> you know, Jody screamed, ah, that'll kill the rat. I picked that rat up. I said, is this it? Don't. We don't want to look out. Dude, don't look out. I took that rat and throwed it outside. And there was a cat saying, thank you. <laughs> you know, cats are lazy. No good animals. They really are. Just said, he knew the rat was in there just waiting for me to kill the rat. All of a sudden, here comes a hundred and then a hundred and twelve pound woman. <laughs> and about a forty pound little girl, both of them come. And this rat, if it weighed a half a pound, it weighed a lot. Yet it's amazing to me that sometimes the devil is as big as a little rat. And he got big Christians standing in the middle of the bed said, please don't bite me. I will leave this house. You can have it all. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? All of a sudden, Jody come up to me and said, boy, daddy, you can do anything. I said, you're right. <laughs> sure, man. Go on and hug me. Even Kathy says, I thank you for get rid of, getting rid of that rat. I said, well, now let's get rid of this dog. <laughs> See, champions will sometimes stand alone. I had to stand alone against that rat because I couldn't get no help from Kathy and, 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 and Jody. Why? They're good spectators. Kill the rat. You'll have some people, you ever know those Christian people, half of them are willing to work and the other half's willing to let them? <laughs> They'll stand on the other side of church, uh, do that over there. You ever had people come to help you and just stand out, all of a sudden they turn out to be the pusher? I know, one time I went to help a man on the church, he gave me a nail in the hammer, and he said, go do that. So I went down there, he said, go do this. I said, what do you do? He said, I hand out the nails. I said, oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, I said, who gave you that job? He said, myself. i never forget one time a pastor asked me to cut the grass around the church. I paid a kid to do it. He says, uh, well, I want you to cut it. I said, well, my money did. The kid needed a few bucks, man. You know? He said, well, don't you like to cut the grass around the church? I said, do you like to cut the grass around the church? He said, no. I said, well, neither do I. I said, let's pitch in together. This kid loves it. <laughs> as long as we get the job done. <laughs> You see, are oh, you a champion or a mouse? Can you be like an Elijah and stand up and say, hey, according to my word, it won't rain for three and a half years? Can you stand up and look at your family tonight and say, all right, kids, we're going to stand together. I'm the head of my house. We're going to stand together. And ain't no demon and devil in hell going to touch our family no more. <laughs> now, we, if we follow, who are we going to serve, God or are we going to serve the devil? And we're going to stand with the word of God and believe God. You understand what I'm saying? See, when you instill that into your children, then your children will instill that into their children. And it'll go down line for line all the time. And those children will grow up into that beautiful presence that God wants them to grow in. So listen to this. Champions will sometimes stand alone. So maybe that's why sometimes you hadn't understood some ministers. Some of them are champions of God that had to stand alone when all the other people were just running with the pack. You follow what I'm saying? But take a man that have enough guts and gall and audacity. Let me tell you something about Jimmy Swaggart. I love Jimmy Swaggart. He says some things I don't agree with. I know I'll probably say some things he don't agree with. But what I like about the boy, he says what he believes. Now, you may not like him, but praise God, Eli, he, as he says what he believes. You may not like Kenneth Copeland. He says what he believes. I appreciate that in those men. At least they got enough guts to say what they believe. They don't stand on a neutral plane. They stand on and they say, this is what God said, and we're going to believe it. I like the way Swagger says, he said, I may lose some more support, but here goes. He pulled them glasses off. Look out, Jack, when he gave them glasses off. <laughs> but at least he says what he believes in. You follow what I'm saying? Now listen to this last point. Only champions will be allowed in heaven. There'll be no pests there. <laughs> Only champions will be allowed into heaven. There'll be no pests there. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13. I want to close with this. Y'all enjoying this? I want to finish with this tonight. I could jump, scream, and holler like I normally do preaching, but I want to show you some things. 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13. 
Listen to this point. Only champions will be allowed into heaven. You only notice that only the people, the great football players get in the Hall of Fame. Are you in the Hall of Fame of faith tonight? Only champions will be allowed into heaven. There are no pests there. Listen to this, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. I want to let you know, everything you do for the Lord will be tried by fire. And God's going to find out, are you worthy to get into the heaven and eat and, and drink and eat, with the mar eat the marriage supper of the land and live with the Lord forever and ever. Let's read that point again. Only champions will be allowed into heaven. There are no pests there. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 13, it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. I want to tell you something. If you're a mouse, you're going to run with the pack, and there's no pests, there ain't no mouses or meeses, however you want to call them, or mice in heaven. God's angels are not fat, naked babies like artists paint them to be. You'll see a little angel walking around, naked, no clothes on. With a little halo. What would you do, man? You're about ready to get burned up. There's a tidal wave coming at you. There's a hurricane. Them blowed all the windows out your house. Water's coming at you. And, it could, and you hear da -da 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 -da. one of the angels of God. They come this fat, naked baby. He said, you grab him, put a diaper on the boy. God's angels are men. See, the, the unregenerated mind cannot understand or paint something that belongs to God because it's got to come out the spirit, man. They can paint an image of what they think, but brother, when you get in the realm of the spirit, then you can paint what God's really expressing in himself. You understand what I'm trying to say? Champions or mouses? Which one are you? When sickness and disease come against you, do you run with the pack? Well, you know, some, the pack says this. Sometimes God does, sometimes God don't. Champion jump up and said, Jesus' word said it. I believe it and that settles it. Yeah, but you, don't have, you ain't got rid of it yet. I don't go by what I see. I don't deny it in my body. I don't deny the sickness in my body. I deny it's right to be there because I'm a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. See, that's balance of ministry. Don't deny that it's there. Deny it's right. You understand what I'm saying? Deny it's right. Why? Because you are in the covenant of God. The Bible said, no plague come near your dwelling. I deny it's right. My little girl tonight has chicken pox. Oh, well, they're almost dry. They're drying up. I said, Jody, I don't deny that you got chicken pox. I deny it's right to be there. But people say, but I had everybody say, well, don't worry about it. It's just a childhood disease. Well, everybody just takes them as childhood diseases. Nobody wants to fight to fight the faith. You follow what I'm trying to say? See, champions are out. I told Jody, I said, what you want to do? Lay here and just die? Or are you going to stand up and believe the word of God? She said, well, I'll tell you what. You know how I, I said, well, then just puss up some more. That's a bit gross, but that's the truth. I said, you see that puss on you? She said, yeah. I said, that's white corpuscles that got in a fight with the devil and lost. See, you can take anything and tie it back to the word of God. I said, look at him right there. You see that? I said, that's them little guys that come up against that chicken pot and that po chicken pot went, doop, 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 busted them, killed them. I said, but you notice some of them are drying up? Yeah, they don't have no more pus. I said, you know why? She said, why? I said, because them white car pussels are still living. <laughs> she said, but I don't see them. I said, you don't have to see them. They're fighting right now. I said, if you hook them up with faith, they'll fight even more. Yeah, they will. She said, you know, Daddy, you make a lot of sense. I said, I've been trying to tell your mama that for years. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my wife, we really have a good relationship. I joke with her a lot, but praise God, she's the best person I know. I mean that, seriously. Beside myself. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's true. You know what I'm saying? Look at my wife over there. She's saying something. Y'all pray for her. She's lying. She came up to me today, right before she said, Jesse, you look tired. Listen, I like to look tired around my wife. You know what I like about Walt? If anybody loves his wife, he loves his wife, don't he? I, he boy, he just, he said, I mean, bar, boy. You, you know, Walt's big, man. Don't mess with Walt. He big. <laughs> boy, when he gets around, boy, you can just see. He just... <laughs> loves his wife. That's good. That's great. That's glory. You don't see much of that anymore. You know how you tell when most people are married? Say, where's your wife? Over there. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah. But that's good. That's great. It's glorious. Are you a champion or your mouse? Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.